Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Brandon's America. I'm your host, Terry Higgins. And ladies and gentlemen, we are part of Brandon's America. Ladies and gentlemen, have you noticed, have you been paying attention to what's going on in Brandon's America? Or are you just been blinded? Are you blind? Are you focused? Are you seeing properly? But don't worry about it, ladies and gentlemen. That's why I'm here. I'm here to show you what's going on in Brandon's America, the truth and nothing but the truth, so help me God. And, it, and also, I'm here to make you smart again. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get into it. I have a story to share before we get into the real video, okay? And I'm gonna get into this just like this. Ladies and gentlemen, stop focusing on white supremacy. Stop focusing on white privilege. Stop focusing on racism. Ladies and gentlemen, we're all racist. But to what degree are you racist? That is the question. And did you know, did you know that black people can be racist too? You've always been told black people can't be racist because we didn't create it. We didn't bring it out in the open. Well, if we didn't, guess what, damn it? We are definitely showcasing it now. Black people are showcasing that they have more racist juices than anybody than most people today. Did I say that properly? Let me say it again. Black people have been showing us that. Myself as well, but you know what? I've always knew we were racist. I knew we were. But we've been showing people from all different races that we are showing that we can be racist as well. And I'm going to show you why. I want to show you what black racism looks like. I'm about to show you. We always hear about white supremacy. We don't hear about black supremacy. Ladies and gentlemen, let me let's get before we get to the video. Let me let me ask you a question. When you turn on the news, do you hear about black people killing white people? Do you kill up? Do you hear about black officers killing white people? Do you hear about black people attacking white people? Do you hear about black people attacking Asian people? Do you hear about black people attacking Hispanics? Do you hear about it? They avoid talking about black crime when we all know it exists, and black people know it exists too. But the news won't tell you, they're too scared to tell you that black people are committing most of the crimes in Brandon's America. But they don't want to tell you that, they keep it hush. The news don't want to sound like they racist. They don't want to look like they're racist. Once again, we all are racist. But guess what? I'm not going to tell you no more. Let's get into the story that I've got to share with you. This story comes out of California, and man, oh man, woo, 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 woo. the Queens, the Queens boy, the some of them Queens boy, they they vicious. But you gonna see, let's see, let's see what them Queens up to, them young Queens. And guess what? The old Queens are telling the young Queens how to act. Let's get into it. This is disgusting. But guess what? The story must be told, and somebody must tell it, and that is me. So let's get into it. Days after a player throws a sucker punch at a girls basketball game, we're learning it wasn't the first time. We have new video of the same player hitting someone else. Tonight, her father, a former NBA player, apologizing on her behalf. Eyewitness News reporter Christian Cordero joining us live with the story tonight. Christian. Mark, about 48 hours after the video of his daughter went viral, showing her clotheslining an opponent at a youth mm. basketball game over the weekend, former NBA player Corey Benjamin says he's sorry. The family attorney of the girl who was punched says, well, that's a start, but telling ABC7 that they are demanding answers because this isn't the first time it's happened. Tonight, new video shows a young basketball player punching two of her opponents in the middle of a September game. The attorney releasing it says it's of the same 15-year-old who clotheslined another player this past weekend. I've never seen anything quite to this extent. I've never seen someone just soccer punch uh, another player. The, the question is, why has this been allowed to continue, and why hasn't it been put to, put to a stop? The girl's father is former Chicago Bulls guard Corey Benjamin. Regarding the fist that flew over the weekend, he says this is not how he raised his daughter, telling the girl she hit, quote, I sincerely apologize to you, and I am praying for your complete healing, both physically and emotionally. To her family, I deeply apologize and regret that this happened to your daughter. 
as she did not deserve this. He continued saying, as a father, I'm shocked and disappointed at my daughter's behavior, as this is not a reflection of the values and standards that my family holds, nor does it exemplify the values, character, and spirit of sportsmanship that the game of basketball requires, end quote. The girl who was punched, 15-year-old Lauren Hamm, has a concussion. Family attorney Kevin Hahn acknowledged the apology but says they still have questions, like whether the girl's mom incited violence, accusing her of saying, you better go hit her after her daughter collides with two players. And, and that, to me, is, is a very disturbing part of all of this. Here's the part where family says you can hear it. You better hit her. Mm, the organization that hosted last weekend's tournament says it plans to ban both player and mom from participating in or attending any of their future tournaments. Yes, we understand the 15 year old who was punched is still showing concussion symptoms, so she's recovering from that. Her family, meanwhile, plans to pursue all legal avenues they have started with filing a police report. Disgusting, disgusting. Disgusting, disgusting. Did you see that? Her mama said, hit her. Hit her. Over a basketball game? What? Why? What? It wasn't even that serious. Whatever happened before that. <sighs> the news ain't going to tell you that. The mainstream news ain't going to tell you this story. It's not. Go on to CNN and see if this story is on CNN. Go on and see if this story is on CNN. Go on and see if this story is on Fox News. Go ahead. They not going to tell you. They're scared to talk about black, black issues. The blacks doing a lot of racist things. This black girl has been terrorizing white girls, Asian girls, Hispanic girls, all on the court. And I, I, I get it. You know, there's always been, there's always a bully. A bully. Bully. Bullying is supposed to be in, right? Bullying is supposed to be a no-go. There should be no more bullying. This girl is big. She's a big girl. Sorry, but she's a big girl. She's big boned, whatever. She's a big girl. And she is taking advantage of girls that are not her size or not her color. And she has even been told by her mama to get them, beat them up. She yelled out, hit her. She punched that girl in the chin, the throat, clothesline punch, whatever you want to call it. That was disgusting. And she's been doing it for a long time. Why is she still playing? Uh, maybe it's because she has black privilege. Oh, there isn't such thing as black privilege, ladies and gentlemen, because this girl's black and she's been doing this to girls for a long time. Mr. Corey Benjamin, ex NBA player, now wants to come out and apologize, sir. You should have, you should have stopped this 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 behavior a long time ago. You should have put her over your lap and gave her a spanking, put her in time out, did something. Now this girl is probably going to be messed up for the rest of her life. She's going to be probably traumatized from of all black girls now. She's going to probably be scared of all black girls. She's going to have PTSD when she comes around black people. Black girls at that. And because of you, Mr. Corey Benjamin, ex-NBA player, I didn't even know nothing about you. I was like, who? Corey Benjamin? I don't even, I ain't never heard of no Corey Benjamin. Probably because he's like on the third or all the way at the end of the bench. Probably you can't even see him. I don't know, but I, he's the XBA NBA player. I, I, whatever. Make up what you want. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I just want to let you know that there's more going on in the world than white supremacy and white privilege. There is also black privilege. You see the girls been hitting the girls for a long time and there ain't nobody did nothing to her. And they probably not going to do nothing to her now. Please be nice to her. She's underage. She, it was just a mistake. She didn't know what she was doing. We all make mistakes. No, that girl needs to be suspended or whatever else and never, ever, ever, ever play basketball again in girls basketball until she, until she goes to some, rehab, some goes to uh, anger management courses, uh, write an essay, uh, apologize to the Asian community. 
the white community because she's been doing it to all the girls, white, Asian, Hispanic, all of them. She needs to do more. She needs to be, she needs to be punished. And, and I don't see her being punished. I'm going to come back and see if she gets punished. I want to see what happens. Even mama needs to get beat. She need to get beat. She need to get spanking too. Mama needs to get spanking too. Mama needs to do her essays. She needs to apologize to the white community, the Asian community, the Mexican community. She needs to apologize too. Mama and daughter need to sit down, do an essay together, and apologize to, to all the girls, to the school, to the league, to everybody. Discuss the behavior, mama. Discuss the behavior, daughter. Discuss the behavior, Corey Benjamin. Father do, daddy do. Discuss the behavior. Let's get it together. Now let's get into the video. And I was wondering the video is like, this ain't the video. Yes, it is, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get into it. Holly Weird. Holly Weird is back at it again. Talking about Mr. Kyle Rittenhouse. Why are, why are you getting the black community worried about this boy? Why are you worried about no old Kyle, LeBron, and everybody else? Why are you worried about him? Why? Al Sharpton, Jesse Jackson. Why are you worried about Kyle Rittenhouse? This boy didn't kill no black people. This has nothing to do with black people at all. This is a white issue. If there's any issue at all, this is a white issue. Why you got your nose in it? Let me tell you why you got your nose in it. You see, ladies and gentlemen, Brandon's America will, will cover up every little thing, all Holly weird stuff, all the stuff. Ladies and gentlemen, the reason why the blacks are so upset, I'm a black person as well, but you know, I, it gives me a headache when every time I can turn on the news, well, not the news, because news won't tell me. Whenever I look on, on, on Google search and all that, and I find out about all the stuff that we out here doing that's getting covered up, it makes my skin crawl. It makes me sick. I just want to vomit. Once again, we are trying to tear down the Trump tars. They're trying, they're trying to make it seem like this is something about Trump. Kyle Rittenhouse has nothing to do with Trump. Okay, maybe he didn't like Trump. I don't know. He probably did. But either way, Trump is gone. You got Brandon. Brandon is in America now. Brandon is in America. You have nothing to worry about with Trump. But guess what? They're looking at Kyle Rittenhouse like he's Trump's damn son. You want Brandon. You, I'm not, I'm sorry. You want Kyle to suffer consequences because of Trump. Because Trump put your feelings, you're looking at Cal as if Cal is Trump's son. So you want him to be put away because Trump hurt your feelings. Disgusting. Very disgusting. And then I have the nerve, LeBron, everybody else have the nerve to make up these fake uh, memes of him, of Cal Rittenhouse crying. Oh my God. You know how many fake tears we've seen? You know how many fake tears we've seen? So Cal, so Cal's tears were just so fake that we forgot about everyone else's fake tears. You know what? Let's get into it. Who did it better? Let's get into it. Who did it better? Let's look at Cal's. Let's judge and see who's, whose tears look, who's, who, 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 who did the best acting job? Let's get into it. Who did the better acting job? Who did the better acting job? Let's see. Uh, why are we here? Why are we here? Why are we here? Let's get into it. Let's look at Kyle first. Let's look at Kyle first. Is after a player oh, throws a sucker sorry, punch sorry. That's at a girl's that's not one. Sorry, wrong video. Let's get into Kyle first. I step towards the Duramax, and um, as I'm stepping forward, I believe his name is now Joshua Zeminski. He steps towards me with a pistol in his hand, and as um. As I'm walking, as I, as I'm walking towards to put out the fire, I drop the fire extinguisher and, and I, I take a step back. Okay, when you step back from Mr. Zeminski, what's your plan? My plan is to get out of that situation and go back north down Sheridan Road to where um, the car source lot number two was. And did you get back? Were you able to go in a northerly direction? I, I wasn't. Describe what happens. I, once I take that step back, I look over my shoulder and Mr. Rosenbaum, Mr. Rosenbaum was now running from my 
right side. Um, and I was cornered from in front of me with Mr. Zeminski. And there were <laughs> there were three people right there. That's what I run. <laughs> We're going to just take it. It's time for our break anyway. You, you can uh, just relax for a minute, sir. Um, we're going to take a break, uh, about uh, 10 minutes, and please don't talk about the case during the break. Wa read, watch, or listen to any kind of crap. Kyle Rittenhouse, 17 years old, about to be charged with murder for defending himself, whether he was crying for real or whatever. Why should he go to prison for? Why should he go to prison for defending himself? He was about to get jumped, get beat. He met a, actually, matter of fact, he had the gun, he had a gun turned on him before he made the shot. He shot himself. So you're not allowed to defend yourself no more? Not allowed to defend yourself? It's a damn shame. You can't even defend yourself. You can't even be white and have a gun because if you have a white, you have your white and have a gun, you're already considered racist. White people with guns are racist in America. You can't be white and have a gun in America. You're already racist. You're white supremacist. It's scary, man. This brand is America, y'all. Brand is America. LeBron and them boy, well, you know, Hollywood making fun of Kyle Rittenhouse and saying, oh, he's so fake. He's so he he's fake crying. Let's take a look at some more uh fake crying. Let's see who did it better. Who did it better? Let's get into it. Let's get into it. Who did it better? Let's see. 665041. This is Jamie Moore. Let's get together. Let's Her daughter went time. missing. A couple days Thank in New Jersey. Don't miss it. Do you have any questions? Went missing. She didn't know she what happened. She thought, she, was, she thought her daughter was kidnapped. Jamie, can we talk to you? Abducted. Yeah, right whatever. Yeah, so can you just take But I'm gonna tell you what the what the end of the story is after after the watch after you watch Miss uh Jamie Moore's um yeah. Jamie Moore do her uh her speech. So it was about I said roughly about seven thirty AM. Um no different from any other time, you know, sometimes I send her in the morning, um, to the store in the evening, sometimes in the morning. So we needed some juice and paper towels. So I gave her my card. She went to the store, which is how you came back. She said, Mommy, I lost the card. So I said, well, baby, backtrack your steps. I said, because, you know, you lost it before I found it. So it's probably right outside of where you went in your pocket and probably fell out. So she did. Um, she left. She backtracked the steps. That was the last time I saw her. She, Jashaya is a smart girl. Like, and I can't reiterate that enough. She would not stay out. She would not uh, go out, go off with anyone. She's a homebody. She plays video games. She, uh, she likes to cook again. She plays with her little brothers, like her best friend. I can not imagine what she might be going through. If she she just being away from us this long, being away from her family who loves her very much. If anybody knows anything, please, please come forward. My baby is going to high school. She's a good girl. Please, 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 please. <laughs> Look at you. Holly Weird. Holly Weird. 
get it going, girl. Tyler Perry looking for you. Tyler Perry looking for you. Tyler Perry is looking for you. Boy, does she wasn't that good acting? Damn, that, that was a second one. Yeah, Jamie Moore. Listen, y'all. As Shiloh Moore, her 14-year-old daughter went missing in East Orange, New Jersey, okay? In September. September, okay? September. She was just found a day or two ago. She ran away from home because her mother was beating her and abusing her. Because she lost a food stamp card. A food stamp card. She was scared to go home because she lost her mama's food stamp card. So she ran away. And guess what Miss Jamie Moore is at now? Jamie Moore is now in jail. She is in jail for abuse and endangerment of a 14-year-old daughter. Damn shame. All that crying, all that fakeness. Your daughter ran away because you've been beating her. She was scared to go home. This girl went from, from, from Jersey to Philly to York, everywhere, cut her hair off, tried to disguise herself because she was scared of her black mama. She was scared of her black mama. Damn shame. But guess what, girl? Don't worry. Mama is now gone. She is now going to do her time. You ain't got to worry about your mama no more. She can go get a new food car when she's done with her time, whatever she get. All right? That's two. Them tears look, what did they look like? Look real to you? Either way, damn it, Hollywood is weird, and damn it, that's number two. Who did it better? Let's see. Let's see who else who died, decided to cry on TV. Who else cried on TV? Who else cried on TV? Let's see. Who else we got? Hi. Mm -hmm. um, this is an old case. Just wanted to we gonna let you guys it. know we have tremendous gratitude toward Detective Sabori and his elite team, our community and the Little League community and the TMC family crew and the millions of people around the world who continue to pray and volunteer their time and effort and endless efforts in finding Isabel. We do not want you to focus or we don't want the focus to be taken off Isabel by us being in front of the cameras or by the media. We are here today to play, to plea for our safe return of these, our baby girl Isabel. Uh, muchas gracias al detectivo Sabori y su equipo, y nuestra comunidad y los millones de gente que por todo el mundo están dando su tiempo y sus esfuerzos en ayudar a mi hija Isabel. Gracias por todas sus oraciones y por favor siguen rezando por su regreso. Estamos aquí hoy para suplicar el regreso de mi de nuestra hija Isabel, seguramente, por favor. We are, we are cooperating to the fullest extent with the investigation. We are increasing the reward. Just please, please, to the person or persons who have Isabel, tell us your demands. Tell us what you want. We will do anything for her. We are looking, we're looking for you, Isa. We love you and we miss you so much. And we will never give up. We will never give up looking for you. Estamos cooperando a lo máximo que podemos con esta investigación. Vamos a subir la recompensa No más, por favor, por favor, a la persona o las personas que tienen la Isabel. Díganos lo que quieren. Díganos sus demandes. Haremos cualquier cosa por ella. Te estamos buscando, Isabel. Te queremos con todo nuestro corazón. Y te extrañamos tanto. Mm, mm, mm. Mm, mm, mm. 
Ladies and gentlemen, that's the Solis family. The Solis family. I know you're probably like, I don't know who they are. It's the old case. I just want to show you the tears, the fake tears, the Hollywood tears, the fake, the fake feelings. That you see the father, you see the mother and the father. See your parents, see parents will be taking care of you, supposed to protect you. They did not. They did not. They got on national TV and they cried and they and they pleaded for their daughter to come back home. Six-year-old Isabel Solis was kidnapped from their home. Guess, guess what happened to Isabel? Her own daddy, Sergio Solis. Sergio cried, please, please bring her home, please. We'll do anything, please. Sergio killed his six-year-old daughter, Isabel Solis. Killed her. Crying on TV. Hollywood, fake tears. We believed you. We believed you, Sergio. We believed you. We believed you. Oh, your whole family believed you. I didn't believe you. I didn't believe from the very beginning. This is old case. This is happened like 2000. Isabel Solis uh, got kidnapped in 2012. And I think he got charged. The body, she was found in like 2014, I think. Isabel was found in the, um, in the, in the, uh, Found out, you know, somewhere. I don't, I'm not gonna get my the whole story because we got more to share, but Sergio Solis killed her. Six-year-old daughter killed her, took her from her, took her from her room, took her from her home, and killed her. Damn shame. Fake tears, Holly Weird. Nobody, nobody made fake memes of Sergio Solis crying, the, the, the Hispanic family crying, the Solis family crying. We saw, we saw, we saw, we saw, we saw Cal, we saw Jamie Moore, we saw Sergio. We got some more to go. Let, who did it better? Who did it better? Let's see. You do, you do the judge. You tell me who did it better. It's Holly Weird. Let's get into it. Who did it better? Who did it better? And the emotions for LeBron James. Oh no! On his promise to come home and bring a championship to his beloved hometown. Oh no! <laughs> who, who did it better? And of course, the disappointment, the stunning disappointment at the other end. James Jones, his longtime teammate, has been with him for all six of these consecutive Who finals. Who did it better? And an emotional Who Teron did Lewis. it better? Everybody is the actors in America. Everybody is such great actors in America. I think not. I don't think these people are good actors at all. But see, the difference here is that Kyle Rittenhouse was defending himself. Jamie Moore was faking on TV. She was faking. She had she she knew she committed a crime. She knew it. Beating her daughter to death. She ran away from home. Sergio Solis killed his six-year-old daughter pleaded for them to bring her home, cried out to America, please, if you have any information, please tell us. Killed his daughter, killed his daughter. And then you got the one and only LeBron James. Crying because, I don't know what he was crying for. Crying because you won a championship. But then after you won, you left. You left, you turned your back on Cleveland, you won your championship and you decide to call it quits. You leave and you go to Miami, you run off to the Lakers. No commitment. Phony tears, fake tears, fake tears, Holly weird tears. Cal, I feel sorry for you. The rest of you, I do not feel sorry for you. Keep crying your fake tears. Do a movie. Oh, I forgot LeBron did one. Oh my God. Horrible. Just des destroy Space Jam. You can't be Mike. Stop it. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get back into our first story before we got into this. Now, we saw the young girl. 
hit the girl, cross her chin in the throat because the mama told her to. What she had done before that, I don't know. It looked like she was going to let it go. Her mama said, you better hit her. Before this story came out, ladies and gentlemen, if you, if you still watch the NBA, grown men are doing the same stupid thing. Nikola Jokic for the Denver Nuggets, the center for the Denver Nuggets, went and went outside the back of Mark Keith Morris of the Miami Heat. It was kind of like the same story, but grown men. Mark Keith Morris, you know, found Nikola Jokic. And the, you know, you know, Nikola Jokic came out of there and just went, mm, like he was playing football, knocked my keyboards all across the damn court. My keyboards fell in the face. He was knocked out, had to be carried out, helped up. Disgusting. Disgusting. But once again, we see. There's other crimes going on, you know? These crimes could be considered racist, but Nicole Yoko did and Marquis Morris could be considered racist. Could be, maybe, maybe not. Maybe it's just his emotions. But Nicole Yoko didn't have nobody telling him to do that to Marquis Morris. He just did it because out of frustration or maybe hate, or maybe got a little racism in him. I don't know. I can't say. But either way, this young girl has been doing this for a long time. Long time. Been doing it for a long time. Has been beating up girls, clothes, lying and punching them for a long time. And nothing happened to her. And guess what? Probably nothing will happen to her again. Because guess what, ladies and gentlemen? In Britain's America, we have black privilege. Not white privilege. Mm -mm. Maybe back in the day, maybe there was a white privilege. But guess what? Table of turn. Ladies and gentlemen, black privilege exists in Brands America. White privilege does not exist. And your life does not matter. White lives don't matter. Asian lives don't matter. Hispanic lives don't matter. Your life does not matter. And all lives don't matter. Only lives mattering is black privilege, black lives. And this is Brands America. I'm your host, Terry Higgins. Till next show, like I said, we're here to do one thing only, one thing only, bring you facts and the truth, and we're, guess what? We're here to make you smart again. Till next time, I'm out here. Peace.